depending on whether you read the Daily News or the Village Voice, the movie FTA signified free the army or fuck the army. When the movie was released, the storm of Vietnam was wrecking havoc in the country. And anti-war militants Jane Fonda, Donald Sutherland, and others staged anti-war shows outside military bases in the Pacific Rim, Hawaii, Okinawa, Japan, etc. Now, Fonda called the show's political vaudeville. a hardcore left-wing anti-war movie. To recognize that although there are fewer grunts, ground troops, peons, snuffies, whatever you want to call them, in Vietnam, fewer white American soldiers dying, there are more yellow people dying than ever before because of the defoliants that we're dropping, the chemicals that we're using, the bomb tonnage that we're using, the type of, of new kinds of sophisticated automated battlefield uh, mechanisms that are being put into Vietnam. Uh, I I'm sure that you all know that as well as we do. Over two and a half times Hiroshima. I went to see it and agreed with Fonda's mission, but I was mostly bored with the movie. Now, it's been written that Vietnam was our first television war, but not for me. I rarely watched the news during the 1960s. I was too busy meeting men for sex in the movie houses of the city. And almost the only thing I read in the newspapers were movie, movie reviews of the latest tidbits and scandal about Liz Taylor and Mike Todd and Liz and Eddie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher and Liz and Richard Burton and very juicy stuff and headline news that lasted for years, which is to say I was not much aware of the real, real world around me. I never even knew there was a Cuban Missile Crisis until years after the fact. And even in 1968, when I was dancing in Guys and Dolls, a married woman in the cast tried to convince me the Vietnam War was wrong. She was very angry and very adamant in her arguments. Now, I told her, President Johnson knows what he's doing. I simply didn't know and didn't much care about politics or the war. Well, a little aside about uh, that woman in Guys and Dolls, besides trying to convince me about the wrongness of the war, this woman also wanted my body. No bones about it. What? No way. No bone. She was annoyingly persistent until I told her that I'd rather have her husband. Well, she left me alone after that. But now, two years later, I did begin reading about the war in the newspapers and watching TV coverage, and I didn't particularly like what I read or what I saw. Now, what were we doing in Vietnam? As far as I can tell, not much except killing and maiming a lot of people, ours and theirs. During that time, I also began reading biographies of each president to learn how our country got to where it was. I started with George Washington, of course, and then the Revolutionary War waylaid me, and I devoured bios of our founding fathers, notably Patrick, give me liberty or give me death, Henry. So now, I was not only a gay militant, I became militantly against the war. Well, another aside, to this day, I continue reading the presidents, and I'm up to William McKinley. 
Now, in the spring of 1971, I, along with thousands of others, marched on Washington. Liberal Bella Abs, a congresswoman from New York, in her hat, which she was noted for, spoke along with other forgotten politicians. Now, I was standing in the massive crowd very near the steps of the Capitol. I've never in my life been part of such a large crowd. Well, Country Joe and his fish were there and told us to follow him in song. I want you to start singing. Come on. And it's one, two, three. toted a large wooden cross to the steps of the Capitol. A chain-link fence blocked him and us from the building, and there were shouts of, over the fence, over the fence, but not from me. I wondered what we'd do if we did indeed stop the fence down. Run through the halls of Congress? Seemed to me that would be rather pointless. Well, the high point of the demonstration was when John Lennon's Give peace a chance rang from the crowd as we, a recorded 250,000 of us, sang along with hands held high, waving the peace sign. President Nixon was quoted in the newspapers as saying he wouldn't allow protests to influence his decisions about the war. I cringed when I read that. The war seemed endless. Well, now Jane Fonda was quoted in the newspapers as saying the USA was an imperialist power. Now I looked the word Imperial up in the dictionary, and my letter to the editor was published in the Daily News. Imperialism is defined as the policy of extending the power or dominion of a nation over the political or economic life of other areas. Jane Fonda is right. And I sign my name. Now, back in New York, behind the Fifth Avenue Library at Bryant Park, I was part of a crowd at another anti-war demonstration. Bella was back with another hat, and she again spoke. Now, the guy sitting next to me on the ground asked, Do you have an extra cigarette, sir? Another sir? What is this shit? Well, I gave the twit one and even lit it for him and didn't bet him, didn't try. 